philosophy is that field that must encompass our possibilities as the kinds of beings that we are to try to come up with some ontology that doesn't just resort to the the fact world out there, that doesn't perpetually detach us from our involvement in the world, perpetually use the Cartesian turn on us and say, well, that, that, how we're feeling about all these things is just a matter of um, opinion, preference, just a matter of subjectivism, subjective in Descartes' sense. Well, Kierkegaard's notion of subjectivity, and the same thing applies to James and uh, Jaspers and Heidegger, his notion of subjectivity is not Cartesian subjectivism. His notion of subjectivity presupposes the existence of the world that threatens us, involves us, engages us, repels us, disgusts us, and so forth. And it's very important, I think, for philosophers today to remind themselves of Aristotle's injunction to the question that has always been asked and always will be asked is, what is being? Nearly anybody, if properly encouraged, stimulated, prodded, might be led to agree that the deepest need we have as human beings, even to the point at times of trumping the need to survive and the needs for water and shelter and food and all that, is the need to believe in, your, in one's guts that you're real. You're a real man. You're a real woman. That's the question of being. In this case, we're asking, what's the being of human being? And more exactly and concretely, what is the being of this being? What is, what is this need to feel and to believe that one is real? There's a... I think there's an occludedness in much dominant, politically dominant analytic thought here. We just don't raise the question of being. Or we say, as my colleague Jerry Fodor does at uh, Rutgers, he says, well, you, you want to know what a fact is, Bruce? A fact is the way the world is. You stick the litmus paper into the solution. If it comes out red, then it's acid. If it comes out blue, it's... Well, I don't think all questions can be subjected to a litmus test. I think that when you say facts are what the way the world is, without having that be the entree into a question of what is being, we're using the verb of being there, the way the world is, is just a way of coming up with another repetition of naive Cartesian objectivism and its Siamese twin, naive uh, Cartesian subjectivism. And the whole objective-subjective business bothers me. Some analytic philosophers have complained about Richard Rorty's neo-neo-pragmatism, I, I would say. As a, he, he no longer believes, apparently, in the objectivity of truth. Well, I, 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 I would put it a different way. I would simply say, according to some of his writings at least, he seems to suggest that, that truth isn't really real. And the, the great American philosophers never said anything like that. In uh, James's a, a, a colloquies about this with uh, Royce and also with uh, Peirce, they dis disagreed a bit on the notion of truth. None of them suggested that truth wasn't real. It was simply a, a disagreement over what the reality of truth consisted in. And here's an example, I think, of if we appropriate all three thinkers, Royce, James, and Peirce, we can come up with great springboards for continued discussions of what truth is. God knows we need that today. We're buffeted by so many, as Santayana would put it, winds of doctrine. Uh, and it's not just the doctrine of fundamentalist Muslims. Our whole nation is engaged in a kind of civil war between uh, fundamentalism, Christian fundamentalism, and what I'm afraid in many cases is mindless secularism. If we don't find some kind of middle way, something that we can all agree on is true, and importantly true, about how to live, about how to survive, then I think we're probably doomed.